Okay, folks, welcome back. Uh, we're going to be going over Lewis dot structures again using an AND chart. We'll go over molecular geometry, orbital geometry, hybridization, and axis notation. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, the one that we'll be working with tonight will be KR F2. Now, which is krypton dichloride. Uh, fluoride. Uh, let's go ahead and create the end chart. E, A, and remember you need a periodic table uh, sheet and handout 6A. Um, now we need to find out how many valence electrons these guys have, the KR and the two Fs. Okay, krypton is a noble gas. If you look at the noble gases, all noble gases have eight valence electrons except helium, it only has two. So KR would have eight. So let's go ahead and record that. Fluorine, if you look, is in column uh, 17. So at seven valence electrons. They all need eight. So let's add these up. Seven to seven is 14. 14 plus eight is 22. So A equals 22, N equals 1, 2, 3, so that's 24. Anyway, do, do the math. Subtract these two. 24 minus 22 is 2. So bonds, that's 1. Non-bonding electrons is A minus S, that's 20. So let's see what we can do with these numbers. Uh, KR is going to be our central atom with two L's, so there's one, two. Now, I need a minimum of two bonds to attach things. Do I have at least two? Nope, sure don't. I've only got one. Let's change the one to a two, so we need to borrow two electrons, so that changes it to 18. So bonds should be really two. Non-bonding electrons should be 18. So this is what I should really use. Now, give L uh, an octet. This L has two. There's four, here's six, and finally there's eight. Same thing on this one. This elf needs an additional six electrons. It now has them. It's got an octet. Now if you look, we've used two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve dots. I've got six dots left. I have to use eighteen. So that means they're going to go on the cent central atom. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now let's make sure I used all 18. Uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. All right. Now let's talk about uh, molecular geometry number. Uh, I've got two bonds, so there's two. And I've got one, two, three, three long pairs. So I have two, three geometry. Let's look that up on handout 6A. Okay. On handout 6A, two, three is right here. It is in the trigonal bipyramidal orbital geometry section. Okay, so 2, 3, and also notice it's grayed out, so it's nonpolar. So let's go ahead and make a list of those, the things that we're trying to find. Uh, we're trying to find um, orbital geometry. We're trying to find molecular geometry. We got to see molecular geometry, uh, uh, hybridization. Uh, what else? Polarity uh, and axis notation. Now, let's look these up on that sheet on handout six A. Make sure you know where to find those. I'll put it up here so we can see it better. All right, two, three. Well, I can't put it all the way up there. All right, two, three. It's uh, it's nonpolar. So let's go ahead and uh, write that on there. Uh, it's non nonpolar. Uh, what else? Uh, hmm. It's linear for its molecular geometry. Okay, so let's write that down linear. Uh, it's hybridiz whoops, it's hybridization was what? What was its hybridization? 
AX2 E3. Oh, excuse me, its axis notation is AX2 E3. Hybridization uh, SP3D. Well, let me make sure that you understand the hybridization again really quickly. Uh, S, P1, P2, P3, so SP3, and this D comes from the last one, so that's like a D1. Finally, the orbital geometry, that's the last one that we need to do, is trigonal by pyramidal. Good luck fitting that uh, on that line. Trigonal by pyramidal. Oh, yeah. And good luck spelling that one too. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we've got them all fit on here. I even misspelled that one. Trigonal by pyramidal, and I was even looking at it. Trigonal by pyramidal and orbital. Molecular geometry is linear. Hybridization SP3D. Polarity, uh, nonpolar, and axial notation AX2E3. That's where the um, uh, molecular number comes in handy. All right, guys, just watch it again, and I hope it helps. And finally, the credits. Voila.